Get out. Hello tankers and tankettes, welcome to a heavy tank replay. This is one from the stream with Sircon and Fosh, and this is a tier 9 game where we've actually got pretty nice matchmaking. Now I'm in the 5120, which is my... I was going to say least favourite tier 9 tank, but that's not quite right. Of the ones I've got, it's the one I'm least comfortable in. It's the one I have to work hardest in to do well. If you look at the rest of my tanks, where I've done well, which have, you know, lots of armour, then you can begin to see why this is quite different. It's got medium tank mobility, or kind of slow medium mobility. It's got a heavy tank gun, it's got an autoloader, but it does not have armour. However, I'm going to have some luck in this game in that regard. So Circon is there in the ST1 and Fosh is in the E50. And this is encounter mode on Prokhorovka. So it's all about this side of the map more than it is the other side of the map. And I quite like encounter mode on Prokhorovka. Normal mode Prokhorovka is alright as well, but you know, encounter mode I think is... Uh, this is a map where it actually works reasonably well because the various map positions that you need in order to be able to control the map, it, it makes for some fairly focused gameplay. Depending on the teams, of course. Your teams can screw you over so easily. But this is going to be one where it's not so much about how I do in the 5120, although obviously this is all from my perspective, but it's going to be about the importance of communication and teamwork. Even if it's only three people out of a team, it can still make a big difference. So, I'm climbing up to the hill. I don't think this is an ideal position, but it seems to me that it is the best place I could be for a number of reasons. I don't want to be where Circle and Fosh are trying to work that ridge line, because this thing, terrible turret armour, terrible elevation, terrible depression, it's just not good for that kind of thing at all. I've got to pretty good view range. I've actually got coated optics, so that's one thing going in my favour for being up here. I've got that burst potential. I've got an okay-ish gun, and I say okay-ish because the gun handling is actually not particularly great on this. It's got good penetration, it's quite punchy, it's a 120mm gun, but it does not have... It, it's not good at snapshots. You have to sit and you have to aim if you want your shots to actually go in with any degree of accuracy. And... The burst potential as well, you know, you, you can do potentially, uh, god, was it 1600 damage per clip? I can't remember. So, there's some targets there, I'm just looking to get some shots in. And you can see that the shot to shot reload is, it's, it's enough that if you're sitting still that you can actually, I mean only two of the four went in, but it's enough that you can actually um, fully aim, which is fine. But if you're on the move, if you're having to pull back and then go forward and fire, then that's not too great. Now look at the guys behind me. There's actually a bunch of tanks with me here, but they've only made it as far as that slope, and they're all just sitting there. That is how you lose the hill, and that is how you lose control of the cap, because you not only need somewhere where Circon and Fosh is, you also need someone up on the hill. In fact, you need more than some some ones. You need several some ones. That made sense in my head, but not really. The fact that I'm here in a very weakly armoured tank and there's a bunch of heavies there, well... Um, yeah, I was just... This is actually this is actually a re-record, I should point out. I was just looking at the team list there and pointing out that there is actually a Reddit platoon on the other side as well, and the IS-8s are platooned. So, yeah. Uh, technical problems with more than usual derpery is why I'm having to re-record the audio for this, but anyway, that's why it pays to record the audio and the uh, video separately in my book. So I'm just trying to spot here and keep myself alive because I know there's a T95 back there, the Torty was back there but has moved into the middle, and that Torty is going to be a pain for Circon, it really is, because that thing's got great gun depression, better than his. So that kind of limits his ability to help out me, but my ability to spot also here is I'm kind of relying more on auto spot range and that of course means I'm going to get spotted as well. So I've got to watch out for tank destroyers because I also know there's an ISU floating around somewhere. There's a Stura Emil or I could say Panzer Souffle and there's the SU-12244 which okay only 175 pen but for my turret if he hits in the right place that's still more than enough for, you know, his 390 Alpha to really hurt me. And the T95 also, especially. If he's got the big gun, that could really hurt me. 
So I'm just trying to spot here and work this position, and you can see that the people behind me, they have finally moved up. Which is good, but watch what they're about to do over the course of the next minute, minute and a half. Yeah, so that torty is definitely causing Circle on Force problems. I'm going to go over here and see if I can... I'm just trying to see if I can spot stuff with the optics, basically, but I'm trying not to expose myself too much, because if I get spotted, I could lose a lot of hit points really quickly. This is one of the the things I have, the difficulties... Uh, oh, can I get the torty? Can I? No, no. I try a shot anyway, but by the time I... Th there's that gun depression. It's like by the time I got... I, I had to drive forward, and that increased my dispersion, and then by the time the reticle settled, he he pulled back, so, yeah. But, yeah, I, I have... The difficulties I have with this tank are largely from the fact that I still find it hard to judge what situations to get into. And just that you can lose so many hit points really quickly with much less chance of bouncing them than in, say, a mouse. So, anyway, T-34 is dead. Yag Tiger 8.8 is dead. The Lerva's about to be dead. Rhymatol at least is far back enough that he's still alive. But, you know, so much for support on the hill. Those guys might as well have not been there. They just got annihilated. Now, I'm going for a reload at this point because the... In an auto load, it's all about the burst potential. It's all about the burst damage and having a full clip's better than not. But of course, I go for the reload and then, bam, tank destroyers. And I've got perfect shots on them, except I'm reloading, so <laughs> GG. Sometimes it works out like that. It, it wasn't a totally stupid idea to go for a reload, because you'd always, in an autoloader, much rather have a full clip than an empty one, or a half full clip, because a full clip is... that's your maximum damage potential. If you if someone comes at you and you start unloading a full clip at them, well, you've got a better chance of, of hurting them enough to force them to back off or to kill them or whatever. Whereas if I've only got two shells, one shell, whatever, and I fire, and then that's it, that's, you know, I, I've kind of potentially had it at that point, and I might take more damage, and I'll have done less damage overall, and then I've got to reload anyway. So, sometimes if you've got that lull in a battle and you don't have a full clip, yes, it's a good idea to, upl um, to upload, to reload. <laughs> well, that's my, uh, I don't know, I had, I've got YouTube on the brain apparently. Uh-oh, uh I say, uh-oh. Uh -oh. And there's that luck! It bounces a heat round on the front of my tank. But, um... Then I have that lock instead, so yeah, there's that tricky torty, and we know at least the T95 doesn't have a big gun, but I just lost, still, what, 700, nearly 800 hit points? Over 800 hit points, in fact, I can count. So that wasn't great, still. You know, it could have been worse if the T95 had the big gun, that could have really hurt, but it's at this point the fact that all the other tanks that were with me died. The, the only ones that had, you know, the, the T-34 and the Lerva have, in theory, got good turret armour. Now, it's not going to work that well in this position, but they had a better chance of spotting stuff, and I'm starting to feel quite hesitant, quite iffy. Oh, but there's the Torty there. If I can take this guy down, that really saves Circle a lot of trouble, and there we go. And it saves me a lot of trouble as well. But I'm here, I'm, I'm just kind of feeling hesitant, and I'm feeling like, well, I don't know, do I abandon the hill? Is it a good idea to stay here? And Circon actually has to kind of remind me that actually, yes, this is still an important position. Yes, there's enemy tanks there, and uh, yes, I don't have any armour, but if I don't work that position, then he's screwed for sure, and we've probably lost this. Because look at it, it's 610. This is looking not great. Now, we're all still alive, and that's something. Uh-oh. Uh yeah, okay, that's hit points I could have, you know, afforded to keep. But no, okay, oh well. At least it wasn't anything that killed a, a crew member or anything like that. Um, but, but yeah, if I stay back there, if I fall back to that point, his, you know, point was that we've definitely lost at that, that stage, because that is not a good place for a 5120 to be back there with the gun depression, with the turret that I've got, our only real hope is keeping a hold of the top of the hill, keeping these guys from getting that high ground, and trying to do damage from up here as well, obviously that's useful. If I'm back where all those guys were at the beginning of the match, well, I can't do anything from back there, all I can do is 
die at the point where they take the hill and then rush me. So it's it's better to go down swinging, really. And that's more than, you know, okay, I got iffy about it, I got hesitant, but I came back. Our panther retreats all the way back to one of the spawn points, practically, and just refuses to come and do anything for the, most of the remainder of the battle. Now I get lucky there, I bounce a gold round. Again, the armor rarely works for me in this tank, but in this game, I got pretty lucky. That guy could have potentially really hurt me if he'd rolled high. Even if he hadn't rolled high, he still would have taken most of my remaining hit points. But anyway, that's one tank destroyed down. That's the SU on really low health. And we know the IS-8 that's left on this slope is also really low health. The STA was here, but he's going to pop up in the middle in, uh, well, whenever he does. The T-95 has still got quite a lot of health as well. You can see that Circon doesn't. So this is a tricky situation for Circon and Fosh. They've got to absolutely make the use, uh, most use of this terrain. And they desperately need eyes on the 1-2-3 line. And this panther would not play ball. If you look where he is, he's not in a good position to spot anything coming down that road. So Fosh actually has to move further west than he wants to. He can't support Circon nearly as well. But he's got to, because the ISU is over there and the Pershing is over there. And we need to know where they are. So at the moment, I am back to doing what I was really doing at the beginning, which is being quite opportunistic in terms of, you know, being careful about what I'm shooting at. I'm, I'm more trying to spot things than I am trying to shoot at things. And if I spot something I can shoot at without exposing myself too much, then that's fine, I'll do that, but I'm not going to expose myself unnecessarily. Especially not now I've got this level of hit points left. The Rhymatol at least is also still up here. He's actually going to finish with a decent score, but you'll see he says something at some point that indicates he was feeling pessimistic as well. And I don't think I can honestly say any of us were feeling optimistic, but I think you look at this, this stage of the game and you look at how the enemies are acting, and you look at what they're doing on the map, and that tells you, you know, if they were being aggressive, if they were coming at us in groups, then I think we would have probably been resigned to losing this. But the fact is, they're not doing that. The largest cluster is in the middle, and they're not really working together to push. That T-95, even though Circ on such low health, I mean, the STA is trying it, and I actually turned my turret, not enough gun elevation there. Circ on Fosh managed to nail him. The SU-122-44 makes a move, but that STA is already dead, and I'm actually going to try for a shot on that guy. First one misses. This is the beauty of an autoloader. There we go. That was kind of lucky that that hit, though. It wasn't particularly well aimed. The T95 is finally making a move. But way too late. The Rhymatol just put a big one in it. Um, take that how you will. And I finish him off. Again, that was a fairly lucky shot in terms of the aim, because I was having to jiggle around and... I was really, you know, I was the, the adrenaline was probably going at this point, because we knew that... Well, I knew that one big slip-up could really throw this game away. But we've actually turned the tide back now. The Panther is finally moving, now that we've got the advantage. Without his help, it, m it must be added. Unfortunately, that Pershing gets Fosh, and the Panther finally, you know, he's now finally doing something, but... Circon being low health, he's still got to be a bit cautious. This IS-8 that's on this slope here with us, is very low health, and I think, okay, if me and the Rhymatol do what the enemy team wasn't, because they were kind of going in dribs and drabs, if we go at this guy together, this Rhymatol, fortunately he's got his head screwed on, he actually pays attention and he actually does go. He's got enough health to take a hit, and he does take a hit, and there we go, we get the IS-8. So, now it's just the IS-6 that's left, Circon's going to roll forward and nail him, and there we go! It looked pretty damn dicey for a lot of this battle, but the fact that, despite my havering, despite the fact that I was seriously thinking about just, you know, my, my instincts to cut and run kicked in, and they were inappropriate instincts, but Sircon talked me back up there, as opposed to talking somebody down from something, it's the opposite of I guess. Uh, he talked me back up onto the ledge, yeah. and um, the fact that I was up there, the fact that I was in a position to then give fire support to the middle, the fact that Circon was in a position to give fire support to me, and you can see that we had to work really hard to make that a win, but we did make it a win. And that's because the enemy team, 
the reason that it swung so badly against us is because most of our team weren't very good, but the enemy team weren't very good either, and that's crucially what made the difference there. And it's it's looking at the mini map and seeing how people are behaving, and at that stage where we knew where pretty much everybody was as well, when you've got groups of isolated enemies, even if they outnumber you in absolute numbers, if they're not making use of their advantage, if they're still being hesitant, if they're still being cautious, then you can actually turn the tide on that. Now, we were in good positions on the map as well, and that really helped, but we still had to work at it, and it was still a fairly close run thing. I mean, we were all pretty badly beaten up by the end of that. Fosh actually got, you know, he got nuked. I don't know about that panther, but you can see that he didn't especially do much damage-wise. He did get a bum roll with the matchmaking, it must be said, but even so, he still did better than most of our team. All the guys that were on the hill with me, apart from the Rhymatol, who, like I said, he had a really nice score. Three people with over a thousand base XP in this match. A Circon had nearly 1500 base XP. We had a whole bunch of people that just didn't do really anything. The Lerva died with 246 damage, the Agtiger 8.8, the T-34 with zero damage, the Chiri and the Panzer Souffle, um, okay, they, again, not good matchmaking for them, but WZ-120, zero damage, you know, uh, we had some, uh, and the Waffle Panzer IV, we had some real stinkers on this team, it must be said, and we had people that didn't go to particularly good places, but if you look at the enemy team, nobody had a particularly high damage count either, but there were a lot more people that were doing some damage, and they took out the people that were doing no damage on our team with relative ease, clearly. So that all came down to that kind of communication, uh, good placement, um, just keeping in contact and working together, and if I hadn't been there on the hill where I was, you know, if I had retreated back, we wouldn't have won that. They would have been able to take Circon in the middle. And that Rheinmetall certainly all being there also helped. I probably couldn't have done that on my own. But it is uh, the case that still it was close and we had to work for it. And some matches are like that. You can be pessimistic and you can give up. And sometimes you're going to lose those matches. But other times actually if, if you just dig in a bit, if you play smart. And especially if, not, if you're in a platoon, if you work together. You can pull things back from the from the brink. So... Teamwork, you know, it does count for something. And this is why um, I think most people would maintain, and I would certainly always maintain, is if you've got a... if you are in a clan and you're platooning with people, use voice comms, use Skype, use TeamSpeak, use Raid Call, use something, because you can be so much more effective working together and coordinating together than you can on your own. And, you know, I, I know I've said... I, I want to play some more solo matches to try and sharpen my skills a bit, but also there's a whole lot of skills involved in playing in a platoon and that kind of communication and teamwork that's very important as well. So you, you can't really neglect one or the other to be a, a well-rounded player in World of Tanks. And, you know, matches like this sometimes result, so, you know, it's worthwhile. So if you enjoyed this replay, this little... I don't know, almost 15 minute tale of, of heroism and teamwork or whatever, you can hit the like button, you can leave a comment below, you can subscribe to my channel, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.